Hi guys, a very very warm welcome from Arjati Creations. Today is a special lesson where we learn how to color Madhubani on this Tote bag. Now the first and the foremost step is that when you want to create it onto a fabric, you should wash your fabric and iron it. So let me wash and iron my fabric and after that we will start our Madhubani style painting on this. Now for this particular Tote bag, I have decided on a beautiful peacock pattern which is very different from what we had done initially. Now this particular peacock pattern we need to first draw it properly on a piece of paper. Now to do that we need to decide our size. So depending upon the size of your tote bag, decide measure your tote bag and come to an approximate size on which you want to create your motive. So depending upon how much part of your tote bag you want to cover, we will first create our pattern on a sheet of paper. Now here if I tell you, the size of my tote bag is approximately 43 centimeters and 32 centimeters. So I don't want to create such a big motive onto it. I will draw my painting onto an A4 sheet. That means this size. So I'm going to create my peacock in the size of an A4 size. Now, A4 size is approximately 30 centimeters by 21 centimeters. So take your paper or sheet on which you will create a background pattern. You will create the pattern you want to do on your tote bag. Now, you, we will first create the pattern in totality on this particular sheet. Now I have created a 1 cm border all around that we are going to create on our sheet as well. Now, first comes what are we going to create at the base. So under the feet of this people, <coughs> we are going to create small curves. So just draw the outline of your curves which you want to create under the feet of the peak. Now here we are going to create a peak. Now it is very important that we draw our peacock really well. Now you can use a pencil also to draw. So I am creating a different shape of a peacock here. So first we are going to do the neck. So see the circle. Spiral is almost the same. Here. This is also. Now it is very important that we draw the double line in pencil here. Because we don't draw current, we are going to trace this on our cloth. Now you must be wondering why are we going to trace it? Why can't we directly draw onto the cloth? You can draw directly onto the cloth, but I prefer to draw it on a piece of paper and then trace it. Because otherwise, if anything goes wrong in your drawing, when you rubber it, it is going to spoil your entire cloth. Now create this kind of a shape. Like this. Like this. And then we go another double line. Now this is going to be the eye. Now 
thread is going to be a tall tail. So we are going to take it all the way up. So this is going to cover the entire, you know, like this. And there is going to be. So here, what I'm doing is I'm merging this here. And I'm creating another this kind of a wing here. Like this. So here when I'm creating just done the double line. Now we are going to draw some basic lines and other intricate details we will directly do onto the cloth. So I am just drawing some basic lines. Here. So basically we, are, we will have to keep the patterns of course similar. This is our drawing of the peacock is red. Now we are going to trace it onto our tote bag. So now take your tote bag and on top of your tote bag fix your sheet. Now first we are going to fix it using a cello tape. So put your tape properly, put it right in the center by taking proper measurements. Secure it using a cello tape or a masking tape. Now this is very important for us to secure. Now see I have taken my yellow color carbon paper. So take a very light color carbon paper. Here I am going to take two carbon papers. And I am going to or you can take a single carbon paper like this. And fix it really well. Secure it. And then we are going to start doing our tracing. Now first for the tracing is doing the outline. So take any sharp pencil or pen and do the outline. And check that it is visible from below. Checking is very important because otherwise you will keep doing your tracing and it will not be visible. So checking and doing proper carboning is important. Now there is a little portion in the top which is still left which we will cover or cover later on. Now first do your border lines. Now let me trace the entire thing. Keep checking in between that your tracing is coming out well. Now let me show you the completed version of the trace. See now you can see that the complete painting has been traced. Now what I'm going to do is take any old piece of newspaper and put it right under your paint. Mm -hmm. Doing this is extremely important because when we start doing our painting, if there is no paper inside, it is going to leak or bleed to the other part. So pure portion it should be properly there. Now you can decide what background color do you want to do outside the peak. So here I am going to go in for a blood red. So take out little color in your palette. So first I am going to do my background color. I am going to use a combination of my thin and thick brush. 
let me show you the shape so i'm using a coral i'm using a coral red this is a fabric real acrylic i'm using a mixture of thin and thick brush so this is this beautiful vibrant red color except for the peacock so the entire background area here i will do in this red shade now the trick here when we are doing this fabric painting is that we are going to directly put color it is preferable to use no uh, water or very little water because otherwise it is going to bleed and the pale gel it is going to ruin your painting so preferable take thick color you can take a combination of thick and thin brush to do an outline and then fill up using thicker paint thicker paint using thicker brush so see here what i'm doing is i'm just doing an outline using a thinner brush thin can be here thin can be any number 1 2 for the finer work that we'll do later on i will show you the thinner brush that we use now is area ko aap dheere dheere keep filling up the color without using any water because otherwise it is going to start bleeding now once you've done your painting of the entire bag i will show you a method of securing the paint also so securing your paint on to your uh, fabric is very important otherwise overuse the fabric will lose the paint or the paint will start faded slowly you will see that the entire peacock will start taking shape now in the areas that are thin like the areas in between the feet of the peacock in these areas use a thinner brush How nicely the peacock has started taking shape. Now we will do. Once this is a little dry, I will do another coat and show. Now see, this has completely dried. Now the first step that comes is to create the everything's in black. See here, I have taken a camel. Oh, sorry, a fine art double zero brush. You can take any company double zero brush. Take out black acrylic color. Remove water from your brush, and we are going to start doing the line.
Now here, better to take a finer brush to do your outlining. Let us start finishing it from here. So draw a double draw a line here inside. After that, what we are going to do is we are going to draw thin lines. Yes. Yes. And do a dot. So first draw the curve, draw the dot, draw the curve, dot, So now, this much of the peacock tote bag is done. Let us start doing further. For this, let us start with this part. First, we are going to outline it. Be careful that there is not much water in your brush when you are doing this. Now let us do a double line. Like this. Now to design this part, in the base, in the center, draw a semicircle. After the semicircle, let us draw a floral pattern. So this shape, like this. and lines here we are going to draw a circle here right touching this a double line here a double line like this. In this inside area we are going to give thin lines. Just like we've given lines there, we are going to give lines here also. Like this. Another double line. So at a regular interval, just first make double lines so that 
we can do different kinds of border pattern designs out here to make our peacock look pretty. Now in this part we will do spirals so it is going to be spiral. Just darken your spiral. Now in this part we will draw triangles. And inside we will draw another triangle. And the other side we will just do a dot. But we are going to make longish use like this. And we are going to give a small line in the center. And for this last part, we will again give thin lining. Like this. See, hasn't it started looking nice now? Now, in the same way, first let us make the outline of the body here. Now when you are doing the beak also, first do the double line. Now once you have done the outline, let us make a small design in the neck area. Now for this top area and the bottom area, it will be lines. And here it will be checks. Let us first make the eye of the peacock. Let's decorate this particular wing while the peacock eye and everything are getting dried up so in this first do a double outline for the outer cock now here i'm drawing a division when i'm drawing the division i'm drawing two lines so that when we give the uh, impression in black color a slight white variant is visible from between because of the double line now in this part we are going to give slanting lines so similar slanting lines in opposite ones now we will do the same this design here So taller curves more triangles now curves the similar kind of a flower pattern. So the more symmetrical it is, the better and the prettier it is going to look. So first, let us draw a double line. there is going to be a double line so there will be very less area here
So now here we are going to do the same slanting lines different in both parts. First give a slanting line. I'm just giving a little different design. This is the long area. First, we are going to do a double line for it. We are going to do a little bit of designing even here. Very little just a little patch first step is that we are going to do a outline of the entire thing and then we are going to do a double line Now we are first going to do a double line here also. Like this. Now first is we are going to divide the entire tail area also. So first do the first demarcation. Double line it. So it is better that we do the trend, we keep the trend for double line constant, constant from the beginning. After that, here we are supposed, we can because the tail area is really big you know. So we will have to do different kinds of designs to cover the entire tail area. So that is the reason why here I am doing dotting. I am going to make a double line here. I am going to give a gap. Now, here I am going to make the same leaf pattern. So for that what we are going to do is draw the same leaf pattern as we have drawn here at a little distance we are going to give two lines as we've done the next pattern which we are going to give us circles okay. so if you are not very confident you can practice a little bit of drawing of circles freehand next what we are going to do is we will give this the longer this kind of a shape try to keep most of your designing consistent for all the various parts of the peacock so in that case what will happen is it is going to look very symmetric it is going to look very neat here what i'm doing is i'm doing the triangles now there is going to be a dot here now let us do another double line here. We are going to do the curve. Now in this area, I am going to do the same leaf. But I am just making one because there is no space. And I am going to do vertical Vertical also not but basically standing lines facing this leaf. We need a little portion up here. Now we have to be careful because the, um, it is a little wet there. So just draw. What we will do is that just like we did it here, we are going to divide this into two parts. Okay, by drawing the line. 
this draw do me double lines so this part is going to have different kinds of slanting lines here now we need to have a little area i want to make some cock feathers so before that let us do different kinds of slanting lines here you can take a pencil just mark where all you want your feather you will do is first we'll do an outline and we are going to do very thin lining like this now for this part we can do I'm doing triangles here like this now we are going to draw lines so a little bit of curved lines See how elegant your tote bag has started looking. Now comes the part of how do we do the border. Now doing the border is very important, and doing it really well is also very important. Now you can choose either you can choose any pattern that you have done in the body of the peacock and match the same pattern in the border area, or you can do two different patterns on the top and the bottom. So let me first do the pattern on the bottom area here. Bottom pattern. First, let us mark the squares on the corner. So for the corner squares, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to color it flat black. Doing this leaf pattern here also. So. I am just drawing the leaf pattern. We are going to draw two lines. Now here, here you can again choose any pattern that you want. Here, I am choosing this pattern, this long one. We do the top part. That is going to be the same leaves as we've done that side. Comes this side. I'm going to do the same pattern as that side. So, be very careful because your corner squares are going to be wet. Okay, whenever you are using solid color, like we did for the red, that part is going to be. Better and it's going to take much longer to dry. So be careful, otherwise it's going to have a. Uh, I mean, if it is wet, you know it might spoil the entire token. Now see how beautiful this has started looking. Now to beautify a little more, what I'm doing is I'm taking some of these sticking crystals and I'm taking my fabric glue. So just randomly put glue in the white area, no, in the red area. Okay. And I'm going to stick these crystals on top of this. And after the crystals dry up, I will show you how you can preserve your painting for a long period of time using an age old traditional you know secret technique of preserving our hand painted fabrics that is how traditionally we would do on our painted chadars, dupattas, suits 
So once your crystals are dried up, then we are going to use. I'll teach you that. So let me, you can put your crystals very generously. You can use any colored crystals also. White crystals look very pretty on a red base. That's why I am using white crystals here. Stick all the crystals and show you. See how beautiful it has started looking. If you want to add more crystals onto the body of the peacock, you can do that as well. But I think it's sufficient in the background only. Now I will let my crystals uh, dry properly, let them stick properly and then I will show you how you can preserve your painted tote. I am going to tell you the trick. So this is our tote bag. Just put an old piece of cotton cloth on top of it. Take your steaming hot iron and just iron on top of the painted surface like this. Okay, don't iron directly, your acrylic color will come. After that, what we have to do is just reverse your tote bag. So, now this I have reversed the tote bag. Again, put your cotton cloth and then iron the back side of the tote bag on the side where you have painted. And now let me show you the tote bag. Now my tote bag is ready for use. Do like our video and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the notification button so that you can be notified as soon as we put a new video or our live on our channel. Thanks for watching and bye bye.